In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we continue the celebration of Christmas, we are reminded today of the family, the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, who we are to emulate, who we are to call upon for their intercession. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, a mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his fathers atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revive him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place. O Lord of hosts, my soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. Blessed are they. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Blessed are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrim ways. Blessed are
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all of these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called as one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they do not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. 
And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, welcome back. It's good to see so many of you back. It's like we were just here yesterday. And being the fe- we're, today we're celebrating the Feast of the Holy Family. And being the Feast of the Holy Family, I figured maybe I could share a story about my own family with you all. See, just recently, the weekend after Thanksgiving, we went over to my brother's house and we're, we're hanging out. And they started pulling out some of their Christmas decorations. And his wife, Lily, had started pulling out the nativity sets and putting them on the table. And Eleanor, my niece, who's four and a half years old, she also likes to play with nativity sets. And she was looking at it. And my mom was with her. And my mom said that the nativity set that was sitting on the table looked just like the one that we have at home except for Eleanor's, had the three kings, and ours at our house didn't have a king. And so without missing a beat, my little four-and-a-half-year-old niece turns around and, and quite matter-of-factly says to my mom, Jesus is the king. You know, sometimes kids get it. They understand things better than, than we do as adults. You know, Jesus is the king. Kids learn a lot from what we say and what we do. They learn a lot, both the bad things and the good things. And oftentimes they accept these truths like Jesus is the king without question a lot better than we do as adults. And sometimes I think that's what Jesus is talking about when he says that you must become like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now at Christmas, we celebrated the fact that Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. But in becoming flesh, he didn't just step out of the clouds as a fully grown man, and he didn't just drop from the sky as a walking, talking baby. He came to us first through a family with Mary and Joseph. And this family were the first ones to say yes to Christ. They were his first disciples and his first church. Now the family is often called the domestic church or the church of the household because it is where we first encounter love and where we first encounter Christ in our own lives. And the family is how the faith is passed on to us. Over and over again, the church tells us that the parents are the first educators of the faith of their children, not the priests and the deacons or even the catechists at church. You see, we don't learn our faith just between these four walls for an hour on Saturday or Sunday. But learning the faith happens primarily in our own homes and in our own daily lives. And we don't even need expensive theology degrees from the Catholic University or St. Meinrad to be able to share the faith with each other and in our families. And so we must treat our families and our homes like a church 
and put Christ at the center of our homes. Where Jesus is the king in our families. So how do we receive Christ into our own families? Well, in our prayers throughout this Mass, we constantly ask that the Holy Family be an example for our own families. And I think it's often too easy to see the Holy Family as, as kind of perfect, or maybe even too perfect to compare our own families to. But they also had their own problems and difficulties to overcome, just as we hear in the Gospel reading today. Sometimes it's easy to see Christ in our own families. Like when you're watching your children sleeping, or when they're helping you cook or clean, or when you're teaching your kids your favorite hobby or sports, or when you're all together on Mass on Sunday. And then there's those times where it's difficult to see Christ in our own families. Like when there's a disagreement, or when UK is playing U of L, or when the children are misbehaving, or when there maybe even there's bigger problems, such as drugs or alcohol. But if we receive Christ into our families and make him, make Jesus the king in our families, he is there with us in the good times and in the bad times, and even when it is difficult to find him in our families. So how do we look at the Holy Family and emulate them? Well, Sirach gives us a very practical way. But St. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, tells us how to make our own families holy. He gives us a household, co- household code or a code for our own domestic church in our families. He tells us that we should be of one mission and one goal in our families, and that's to have Christ as the center of that house. And when he says that for wives to be subordinate to your husbands, subordinate doesn't have, need to have the subservient overtones that we usually associate with it, because it comes from, a, from the words meaning to be under the same mission. So what Paul is telling us is that husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, all need to have the same mission and the same goal in the family. And what is that mission? It's giving their children something to look up to, to be loving to them, that they might not become discouraged in what they see in their parents by showing them by their own actions, that Jesus is the king. And Paul gives us a list of how to do this in our own families in small ways. He tells us that we do it by letting Christ dwell within us and within our own families. We do that simply by sharing and talking about our faith with one another in our homes or in our cars while we're together. He tells us that we do it by letting Jesus control our hearts in everything we do. And we do that in our own homes by seeing Christ in each other, even when it's difficult. And he also tells us that we do it by doing everything as a family in the name of Christ. And we carry that out by turning to him in prayer in every decision that you make as a family. You see, Christ entered the world through a family, the Holy Family, and he wants to enter the world again through your family in order to make it holy as well. The family should be the first place we encounter Christ, the first place where we say, Jesus is the King.
as we place Christ at the center of our lives and as we rely on the intercession of the Holy Family, let us now profess our faith. I believe. As a family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph faced an uncertain world with faith. We celebrate their steadfast courage and commitment by bringing our prayers before God. For all who lead the church, that they prayerfully guide the faithful to lives of holiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For peacemakers of every nation, that their longings soon be fulfilled, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for families and for those who have lost their families, that they find security and comfort, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us gathered in the Eucharist, that we may share each other's lives and concerns as one caring family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the needs of our brothers and sisters in our own community and in our sister parish, St. Mark's in Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the special intentions that we hold in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed, let us now pause and remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for the intentions of this Mass, Jim and Layla Mar Margaret Polin, let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers we have brought before you this day, those that we have voiced and those that still remain in the silence of our hearts. Help us to turn to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph always, for we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is 347. Angels we have heard on high, three, four, seven. <clears throat>
wish me a mortal man to please and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Our communion hymn is 353, Away in a Manger, 353.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. One announcement, the ushers will be by the doors that we have a second collection that the diocese has asked us to do. It goes to Archdiocesan Charities. So our ushers will have baskets by the doors if you can be generous to Archdiocesan Charities. We hope you've had a blessed uh, Christmas. It continues for a couple of days, so uh, keep all of us in your prayers. It's great to have Deacon Sean McKinley with us. Deacon Sean's one of our seminarians uh, who's also a son of the parish. And so thank you for, for preaching this weekend and for uh, being here with us. So pray for Sean and for uh, Tony Cecil and other uh, men from this parish who may be discerning a call to priesthood. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Our closing hymn is 343, Joy to the World, 343.